Okay, great. So you have finished knitting your cowl. You've run out of the silk mist yarn. This is basically the end of where my skein ends. And so I have no more yarn left to knit. And so what I'm gonna do is I need to graft the two ends, the beginning end and the end end. I'm gonna graft these two together in a seamless way so that it's nice and smooth and beautiful. So it might be a little bit intimidating if this is the first time you've ever grafted anything. And so you might not want to do it directly on your cowl. And so what I will suggest is to make yourself a cute little sample, a little experiment. This is a little test swatch. So you can graft your test swatch and understand how the grafting process works before you dive in and do it on your cowl. So let me show you how we're gonna graft these two ends together. So our cowl project is five stitches of knit stitches, five purl and five knit and all the way across. And so what we need to do is we need to graft this five by five ribbing. Uh, so basically what's gonna happen is we are gonna fold these two ends together sort of like a sandwich. I'm going to unzip all of this crochet chain and release all of the live stitches here. And I'm gonna put them on the other side of this knitting needle. So I just happen to be using circulars. If you were using two straights, you could basically put another straight in here, but this is how we're going to organize and align the two, the two sides of your knitting. So my first step is to find the end that has the knot that's been tied into the into the yarn. And then what I'm going to do is unpick this part of the crochet chain. And that will allow me to unzip this side. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to unzip it and then put the stitches on a smaller, thinner uh, DPN, a double pointed needle here, just because I happen to have it. But also um, unpicking this and picking it up with a smaller needle is a little bit more, it's a little bit easier than trying to do it with the main needle. Also, when I pick up the live stitches, sometimes they're oriented in the wrong way. And so by putting them temporarily on this DPN, it gives me an opportunity to reorient the, the stitches as I put them back onto this needle. So I am going to sort of take a look and see where these stitches are. And I sometimes will poke the needle through the stitches, placing them on the needle already. And then I can start to unzip, making sure that this is going to unzip clearly and easily. So as I unzip my crochet chain, the stitches are just landing right onto that needle here. I can also undo them individually, so I can sort of unzip one stitch and then pick that stitch up, unzip one stitch and then pick that stitch up, unzip and pick up, or I can try and see that path where the needle can go and sort of pick up the stitches before I unzip it so that I don't lose that stitch so that it doesn't run down my work. So I know that a needle goes this way, needle goes this way, and picking up so that the, the legs are oriented correctly on my needle here. And then unzipping the rest of that crochet chain. And then I can get rid of that waste yarn. That was the provisional cast on. So that is all done gives me an opportunity to double check and count how many stitches. I should have five, five, and five. And now what I want to do is I'm wanting to fold them together like so. I'm gonna transfer my stitches from this DPN back to this uh, other knitting needle here. And this gives me an opportunity to check the orientation of the stitches, making sure that they're all aligned. So if you look at the anatomy of a stitch, you'll see that rests over, it sits almost like with two legs on top of your left hand needle. So when you slightly open up these stitches, it should look like the right leg is hanging over the left stitch. That's how you want them to be oriented. So if they were oriented in the wrong way, you'd see the left leg of this stitch hanging over the front of the left hand needle. So I want it to be the opposite way. I want it to have the right leg hanging over 
the front of the needle. Okay, fantastic. So I have live stitches on the beginning and end of my knitting now. Okay, so this is the back side because we're looking at mostly the pearls. This is going to be the front side. I have Okay, so with your cowl, what you would do is you would fold it in half and hold the two needle tips together. And so all your live stitches are here. And this is how we're going to begin grafting. Now, normally when you're grafting your project, you're going to want to use your working yarn. You're gonna use working yarn that is at least five times the width of your work. But in this case, just because I wanna show you the path of where my grafted stitches are going, I'm going to use a contrast yarn. I'm gonna use this yellow color here. So I'll just grab a length of this yellow. And then I'll just thread the darning needle with this yellow contrast yarn, just so that you can see what I'm doing. So before we get set up with doing any grafting, what we're gonna do first is we are gonna do two setup steps. And basically leaving all of the stitches on the needle, I'm gonna take your tapestry needle and you enter it into the first stitch on the first needle, on the front needle, purl-wise. And then we're gonna leave that stitch on the needle and then we're going to enter into the first stitch on the back needle, knitwise. And we are gonna leave those two stitches on the needle. You can snug this up a little bit. We're gonna leave this yellow contrast yarn, I'm gonna leave it rather loose. And then at the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snug it all up. So there is a pattern when you're doing grafting. And so basically the pattern is going to be, we're going to work sort of the first stitch on the front needle and then pull that off. Then we are going to work the second stitch and leave that on the needle. Then you go to the back and then you work the first stitch on the back needle and pull that off. And then you work the second stitch on the back needle and you leave that on. Then you come back to the front. So it's always two stitches on the front, two stitches on the back, two stitches on the front, two stitches on the back. And each time we're getting rid of or, or pulling off the front two stitches. And so now I'm all set up to actually begin the grafting process. For grafting knit stitches to knit stitches, the mantra or the, the sequence is going to be knit, purl, purl, knit. So that means I go knitwise into the front stitch on the front needle and I'm gonna take that off. Then I'm gonna take that same needle tip and I'm going to go purlwise into the next stitch on that front needle. So then looking at the back needle, I'm going to go purlwise into the first stitch on the back needle, pull that off, and then go knitwise into the next stitch on the back needle, and I'm going to leave that in place. So I'm going to leave all my stitches here very loose, and we will tighten them up later, and you can see sort of what has happened. But coming back to the front, we're going to do knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, knit. So that means knit wise into the first stitch, pull that off, purl wise into the next stitch, leave that on, purl wise into this first stitch, take it off, knit wise into the next stitch, leave it on. Knit, purl, purl, knit. So now we're coming to the section where we're going to be working with the purl stitches and grafting purl stitches to purl stitches is the reverse. It's basically the reverse side of your stockinette stitches. So rather than going knit, purl, purl, knit, we're going to go purl, knit, knit, purl. So purl, knit, Knit, purl. Purl, knit. Knit, purl. Purl, knit. 
Knit Pearl. Now we've come back to the knit section, so we're going to switch our sequence again to Knit Pearl, Pearl Knit. Knit Pearl, Pearl Knit. And now I'm getting to the, my very last two stitches, so I will just go as if to knit, as if to purl, and then we are all done. That looks a little bit messy right now, but I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tighten up all of these yellow threads. All of the yellow yarn is going to tighten up and make a much better, smoother looking result. All I need to do is come along and tighten up all of these stitches. And I just go one leg at a time, following the path, seeing what needs to get pulled up next. Just slowly making your way across. And you can see how much neater and how much tidier that is already, and how much excess yarn that I have here. And I'm just pulling up enough yarn to make these yellow stitches where I'm grafting to make them look the same size as the other stitches that are already in the cloth. Fantastic! So you can see that's my grafted stitches. Obviously you can tell where the seam is because I'm using a contrast color, but you can see that these look perfectly like purl stitches, these look perfectly like knit stitches, and so now if you feel comfortable working with this swatch in this sample, now it's time to actually graft your finished piece. So just as I did before, I am going to, so just as I did before, I'm going to unzip my crochet chain here for the provisional cast on. And I'm gonna put them on a temporary smaller needle so that I can uh, more easily transfer them to the larger needle. So you can see I'm very slowly going across, picking up the stitch and then unzipping it. Picking up another stitch, unzipping the crochet chain. If I unzip the whole thing, then it might be a little bit of extra work to go and find all those stitches and prevent them from running. So I go very slowly and I pick up the one I want and then I unzip. So what I need to do is this, uh, this needle is obviously not aligned in the right way, so I'm going to take my other needle, transfer my stitches so that all the stitches will be aligned in the correct way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, like I said, five times uh, the width of my project. Now it's kind of tricky to figure out because your project is... Well, it's going to be actually quite wide if you spread out all of your stitches on the needle. I always err on the side of caution, so I'd want to use more yarn just in case. I don't want to run out of yarn in this case. So, so this is one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do six just in case. And like I did with the previous example, we're going to begin by doing the two setup steps. The first one being to enter your tapestry needle purl-wise through the first stitch and leaving that on the needle. And then we're going to enter it knit-wise in the first stitch on the back needle. And we're going to leave that on the needle. 
And then just as before, we're going to go with the sequence for knit to knit grafting, and that is knit purl purl knit. So I go into the stitch knitwise, taking it off, going purlwise, leaving it on. Purlwise, taking it off, knitwise, leaving that on. And again, knit, purl, purl, knit. And I know that there's going to be a lot of excess to pull up, so I'm going to try and, you know, not leave too much excess as I work. If I leave too much excess, then I'm actually going to run out of yarn as I do my grafting. Knit, purl, purl, knit. So there is our grafted edge. Now all I need to do is go along and clear up all of the inconsistencies here with the, the size of those stitches. I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna pull up all the excess. And make it a nice and smooth transition. Okay, so there is your seamless grafted join. And all I'm gonna do is with these extra ends, I'm just gonna weave these ends in, and then I can go and block this finished cowl.